What's the half sound the hops got yeast and peace? This the molten hour where we talk about our drink and tell you what we think every other week. And if we get drunk, well, we might slur our speech. Got the gift of gab, the friends you wish you had. Join us for a drink, join us for a laugh. Time is never wasted, where you getting wasted? The molten hour here, people, people take your places. People, people take your places. Is the mailman ready to deliver? Woo! Yes, that wow. amazing. Jeez. Well, here we are. Welcome to another episode of the Malting Hour. Uh, I am uh, one of the hosts, Tony Golick. Uh, if you're listening, you probably know that by now. And I am Brandon Wittinger. Yeah, we're here together, and uh, we're sitting here in beautiful downtown Chicago on a Saturday morning, facing the Trump Tower, just gleaming down at us as a. Uh, stare about a beautiful skyline ruined. Uh, we're sitting here at Crushed by Giants, uh, and we are joined here today uh, with Jesse and Dave, the mailman. Uh, I already forgot your last name. So Kearns, K-E-R-N-S. Kearns, got it, got it, got it. Well, thanks, guys, for uh, having us. spelled it right. <laughs> now it's... People spell it wrong all the time. <laughs> Kearns. Well, thanks for uh, having us out here today, guys. We appreciate it. Yeah, uh, man. We're looking for- we were looking forward to, to doing this. Jesse, I know we talked about doing some stuff with you. Yeah. Uh, when we were going to do video, and then that went to hell. Uh, so, you know, good thing it never worked out. But, you know, we could still do something like we're that. We're here. Something Nobody wants now. to see him on video. I've got a face for radio is what I've been told. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. That's why we only do short videos. <laughs> uh, so, why don't you guys uh, so why don't you guys tell us a little bit about Crushed by Giants? Because that's number one. I have, First thing I want to know is where does the name come from? And then we can kind of get to the history of this place. Uh, the name, actually. So, Greg is the owner, uh, Greg Schuff, and he owns three other breweries besides this. We've got Corridor. Dry Hop and Roebuck. And when this space became available, like he took a lot of interest in it. Um, and I know he had some, uh, he didn't have the easiest time getting in the space because of certain neighbors mm. that happened to be owned by conglomerates, mm. uh, multi billion dollar conglomerates. Oh. And for whatever reason, they felt that a small craft brewery was gonna like dip into their profits and just yank the money out of their their wallets. And uh, so. What, no? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and it's funny because I, I won't say who it was exactly, mm-hmm. but between AMC and Under Armour, only one of them makes food and sells beer. Uh, and they felt that since we were going to sell beer and make food, that we were going to like just directly impact their bottom line. Fucking Under Armour. Man. Yeah. Can you believe that? Losers. I love their underwear though. It's it's great. It's like nice and comfortable. Their socks, yeah. yeah. And their socks are amazing. Wearing them now. They wick sweat. See? Oh, wow. Oh, no, sorry. I've got are they sponsoring on. you? <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> but, uh, so Under Armour, since they were selling food and beer, um, they made it very difficult for Greg to, like, acquire the space and, you know, the whole, like, crushed by giants, like, here are these dudes. Uh, and they're just kind of getting, like, they're lumbering giants getting in their own way because it's like, we're going to open. Yeah. Why are you making this so difficult? And the reality is, like, maybe someone that's here having a beer, you know, might want to go see a movie sure. or vice versa. But they saw it as, like, you are directly taking our customers and uh, we're gonna make it difficult for you to make a buck. Do you think Under Armour knows there's a difference between going to a, a brew pub and seeing a movie? <laughs> I don't know, man. Mm-hmm. I, we should talk in to in these out. times, I'm gonna use that a lot during this interview. In these times. Oh, we use that a lot. <laughs> this whole year is what we've done. I like saying these things times. that I hate hearing just to see how people react <laughs> in these times. You know? <laughs> and then people are just uncomfortable like, yeah, I get it. I'm like, sucker, <laughs> you played it in my game. Um, but yeah, so that, that's the story of the Crushed by Giants name. Um, you know, as far as the team, when, when I'll talk about like my story of how I kind of came to be here. I, I interviewed, when I left Goose Island, uh, Greg was one of the three breweries that I interviewed at. I didn't know if I wanted to stay in beer. You know, I'd been in beer for a long time and it was like, do I try something new? Do I stay in beer? And the reality is like, you meet all these amazing people in yeah. beer and I'm like, yeah, that's cool. I'll still have those friendships, but I'll like, keep on doing marketing somewhere else. But I'm like, I don't know, man. Like when I got into beer, it was this really exciting time and place. And I made a lot of great friendships and I kind of wanted to keep that going. And I felt in my heart of hearts that I was maybe part of like what's become Chicago beer. And I'm like, and I want to keep on growing it. And um, so that's why <clears throat> when I interviewed with Greg, um, this job really was attractive to me. And he told me about the space. I hadn't seen the space, and I was like, holy shit, you're opening a place? You're opening a brew pub in downtown Chicago? On the second floor. Yeah. It's not even ground level. Yeah. It's just kind of weird. But, you know, like, the, the guts that that dude has, I'm like, man, if I'm going to follow anybody and I'm going to fire, like, 
That's the guy. Yeah, that's the guy. And then, you know, the, the first time, the first round of interviews, they ended up going, going with someone else because I wasn't ready to start a job yet. And they were kind of like, well, we have to make a decision. They went with someone else and they came back a few months later and were like, hey, are you still interested? And uh, we connected. I started. And I remember walking into the space um, and it was just awesome because, like, when you're in the space, you don't feel like you're in the middle of downtown Chicago. Right. And I think um, Greg did a really great job of, like, capturing the essence of, like, a Chicago neighborhood brew pub. Uh, so, like, the space was, was amazing, but when I heard who was going to be on the team, so, like, Pat Sheeran is a chef. You know, he opened Trencherman, City Mouse. Um, and then there was, like, rumblings about this brewer, and I think it was Andreas from Great Central, who was like, oh, yeah, dude, you're going to have Dave Kearns, like, your brewer. It's crushed by giants. And I'm like, what? Really? I'm like, how? And like, Greg, throughout the whole process, never told me who it was. I never questioned it, at, like, to ask. And then I found out it was Kearns, and I was like, shit. So, like, now we have, like, a we history. we met briefly at, at, at Great Central. Yeah, before yeah. Before you guys went to, like, a Sox game or something. Yeah. <clears throat> so, like, it was just, like, this really enticing thing, because I'm like, we've got this, like, rock star brewer who, I'll let you tell your, your history, but, like. It's really nice of you to let him do that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta give you some time but I was excited to work with Dave and with Pat because like like the reality is like you know with brew pubs it's always like you either have to have really good beer and your food could be okay or really good food and your beer could be okay and like you get yeah. around and like in the ambiance also right we'd like it to be both yeah <laughs> I, I prefer both when I go places. I, I yeah. want both but sometimes Maybe you go to a place and you're like ah yeah. the beer's not terrible <laughs> yeah, yeah so here it was like you know we came out guns blazing awesome brewer awesome chef and you look at the space i'm like holy shit man like three for three so um that's my story with crushed by giants um yeah man i i really love the space like i I love everything about what we're doing here uh and as a born and raised chicago kid like you know when when you're in high school you come out here because it's like it's downtown at devavix and all these (laughs) and as you get older you said devavix (laughs) (laughs) said no one ever (laughs) They're like, oh, there's guacamole on this burger. Oh, and is that cheddar cheese? Whoa, it's amazing. They're living on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a foodie. Um, but to, to, like, you know, come downtown and, like, make really good, fresh fucking beer and really goddamn good food. Like, we're making our own tortillas here. It's, like, these little details that, at, at, like, at the end of the day, they, they mean a lot. They carry a lot. Sure, yeah. And um, to do it downtown... And to not want to be like some cookie cutter business like is is pretty rad, and to be a part of it is is even more rad for me. So, awesome. Now, mailman, it's time for you. <laughs> it's time for you to deliver. What's oh uh, and, and obviously you know what's your um, involvement here? I mean, you're the brewer. Obviously, <clears throat> you're the guy who. Is I mean, I, as the drinks we're drinking right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, uh, I started brewing ten years ago, professionally. Went to school in Germany. Went to Siebel, then to Domans over in uh, in Munich. Um, started at Pete Crowley, gave me my first job over at Haymarket, worked there for four and a half years, uh, became their lead brewer there, um, then went to Tribes to open them up uh, down in Mokina with Nile, and uh, <clears throat> worked there for two and a half years, and then uh, went to Solemn Oath, <laughs> went there about uh, two years, was there about two years uh, as head brewer there, um, and then I uh, just got done with commuting and stuff like that and started at Great Central. I, I wanted to get into production to like learn that uh-huh. a bit and so I went into to Salmo with and uh, which was cool but I decided I wanted to go back to a pub. Sure. Um, uh, everybody was great that I worked with over there. Uh, Andreas was awesome but I uh, just decided I wanted to go back to a pub and uh, Brant and I had talked a couple times. I, Brant and I have been friends for probably eight years. I've known Greg for about the same amount of time because okay. when they came when he came here to open Dry Hop uh, we helped make their first couple beers for festivals at uh, Haymarket. And then Brand and I have done a couple collaborations throughout the time. And him and I have talked back and forth about, because uh, I've always wanted to go, I've been wanting to go back to a pub for a, while, for a little while. <clears throat> and uh, so him and I talked like a little bit, and he told me that this place was opening. So we had talked like for like a, like almost a year, and then oh, he was wow. like, "Hey, man, it's a, uh, it's time for <laughs> it's, it's time. time for the it's time for the interview." So time I interviewed with five other uh, very good brewers. Um, very good brewers, and uh, they they were, <laughs> they are, um, and uh, so. But I was able to get the job, and I'm really stoked on it. And I've also been able to brew at uh, Dry Hop and at um, Corridor because of just 
yeah, quarantine yeah. and all sure. the COVID stuff. So we've been, you know, in these times, as Jesse's in these, these times. times. <laughs> yeah. So there's been there's been there was two of us with Brant's help uh, doing all the brewing for a while, and then now we brought our, our, our guy Frank back. And so he's he's got corridor. Steve's got dry up and Roebuck, and I got this place. So, but we still are helping each other out and stuff like that. That's awesome. So, yeah, uh, I love the space. Uh, the system is cool. Um, yeah, we got a it's great. To, to yeah, see the yeah, system. we're dialing everything in. So, I mean, this is the first batch of beers, but they're only going to get better. Um, we're going to do some. I'm trying to. I think I might start a sour program, um, and then uh, we're going to do as much barrel aging as we can. Sure as well but we have a lot of space at dry hop so i'm trying originally we we're supposed to start a barrel aging program for all the places uh -huh. um and use dry hop space but uh it's just because of the staffing we've gone down uh, these times bit. had made us uh, yeah course. <laughs> but yeah we're, we're gonna get back into that like uh pete taught me a lot about barrel aging um when i was at haymarket and we did a lot of that at salmo so i'd like to get back into doing uh things like that as well so we're gonna have some interesting cool stuff going on here just getting it started right now. Cool. Yeah. I so. Said, how long? So you guys officially open what? Because this is uh, what's today's date? The eighth. The seventeenth of July was when we opened. Yeah. So you guys opened almost less than a month ago. Yeah. Uh, amidst uh, a pandemic when nobody was really open. Yeah. What the hell were you guys thinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that wasn't originally the plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's funny because we've fallen into this thing with. Like different media outlets kind of like reaching out and being like, we want to cover a story about a business opening in the middle of a pandemic. But it wasn't like we were last year, like, all right, cool. We've got everything ready to go. Wait till the pandemic hits. <laughs> yeah. And it's go time, bitches. There's this thing called <laughs> coronavirus, yeah. COVID-19. We're coming. like talking so to the, the president. Away. We're like, yeah. Donald, when is this pandemic going to hit? <laughs> I don't know. I'm hoping it'll start in February, okay? And it's just going to exacerbate the world and the problems. And hopefully you can open in July. And Greg was like, Mr. President, thank you. That's, and that's how it mailman's like, I'm fucking ready. <laughs> and I was like, I'm ready to market. We're all just like, we're, we're ready to, to open because pandemic is what we were waiting for. <laughs> oh, well, that answers that. Great. Was there, I mean, was there actually any like thought of it or was it just now's the time, let's just do it because we're ready to go? I mean, yeah, we were done with construction and uh, inspections pretty much right when the pandemic hit so which was nice because at least we didn't have to finish all that kind of stuff sure yeah you yeah, know we were ready to open yeah. as soon as like you know Lori gave the 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 okay, you know, yeah. The okay. So. yeah you know when i when i started like the date that we were kind of tossed around was may right I, i'm pretty sure that was, like, it was supposed may, to be may 8th June, yeah it was supposed to be may 8th was the opening <clears throat> um but yeah it, that didn't happen so <laughs> from yeah so like, I, i've been working at the other breweries like so oh, the, this busy. whole time, yeah. So it's been I've been we've definitely Still stayed been busy yeah. the whole time and sure. been doing some recipes over at those places and stuff. And Steve's been great about helping me out. That's so awesome. as far as like the the opening goes, how was you know? I mean, I saw it all on social media. You guys were opening up. Like, what was the reception? Did you guys get a good turnout of people stopping in? Or we had a great turnout. Um, the the issue is sustaining those numbers. You know, yeah. um, it, if you look outside. You know, if it was any other given Saturday, there'd be a ton of people just walking around if in it Chicago. Wasn't in these times. And if it wasn't in these times, <laughs> you know, you're they, go with that, man. You better I'm, I'm gonna own it. <laughs> Jesus. Um, like the, across the street is the Marriott, and like that hotel has always been busy. There's yeah. like you know, like yeah, it was a pain in the ass to drive around here before Steve, these times. Sorry. Yeah, it's completely closed now. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, so like, oh, geez, dude, I didn't know that. Uh, we're so we're working with we're reaching out to like um, just different folks downtown that we want to work with and, and you know hope to jump on their networks and one of them is Key Magazine the um, like a concierge magazine and the guy that owns it Walter was like yeah there's actively right now six concierges that are working full time six concierges in the whole Holy freaking shit. city so you know like what these times have taught us is like. You know, you've, you've got to make do with what you have. Yeah. You don't have these huge staffs. Um, so, like, what a, what one dude was, like, doing before was, like, checking people in. Well, now he's, like, the concierge as well. So um, it's, like, reaching out to those guys. You can't just go, like, to the concierge. But in a way, realistically, like, I've dealt with concierge before, mm -hmm. and they're kind of, like, they want you to, like, bend over backwards for them. They think they're, like, these rock stars, and they're kind of, like, I'm the one that stands between you and millions. And you're like, uh, okay, man. Um, so, like, in a, in a weird way, it's like, cool, you don't have to deal with that bullshit. Like, yeah, I could just sure, go to the front sure. desk and be like, hey, man, we've got a, a brew pub down the street. We're brand new. Like, we're making awesome beer. We've got awesome food. And they're just like, 
Thank you. People always ask where they can go have a beer, and it's like, well, here you yeah. can have the freshest beer downtown. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Uh, if if anything, this pandemic has taught us what you can do, like and what where your Survival. limits are, and yeah. yeah, you have to. And it's um, we've been doing that here, and you know, it was very promising having the opening parties because it's like all these people excited about it. But uh, at, at the end of the day, it's like that's one two days, but like, what about the rest of the days? You know. Sure. And it's like trying to get in front of the Streeterville residents. And, and, and what I was saying before, like, downtown's not really known to be, like, a neighborhood. For us, you know, like, us dudes that don't live down here. Right. But, like, the people that do live down here are kind of like, well, shit, we're it's human, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. this we're is our neighborhood. Yeah. 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 I mean, and also, I mean, there's people still, a lot of people are working from home. So it's like, like, my buddy, I have, I have friends that work down here and stuff like that, but they're just all working remotely. They're like, I'd be, they've come in to, like, have a beer or something like that, but they'd be in here, like, every day right. if they were normally working at the office. So, yeah, there's there's some stuff. But we have a really good team here. Um, the the guys and, and girls that work here are great. Like, uh, Kyle and uh, Tina are uh, GM and AGM, okay. and uh, they used to run the Five Star okay. um, they're awesome. bar over there for a long time. Uh, they're They're great. Uh, we have a good front of house staff. Um, I mean, we have we have people that run our our front of house, our kitchen, and our brew breweries for all four places, and they're all like really good at like they've done this a bunch. You sure. know, they've been doing it for years with all these locations, so they're they're really good at like dealing with <clears throat> you know unknown stuff and like adjusting and stuff like that. Like Matt and Ryan and, and Bran are all got really good great for that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and it's it, nice to have somebody like that's like there that has your back sure you know oh, what i'm yeah, saying of course like brant's Especially, always got our yeah. back like with the brew house and i know that matt and ryan and everybody have the kitchen and, and greg's great so like he's cool. it's funny because like i worry that he's stressed out or something like that but when i see him he's just like you know we got it man like we'll <laughs> figure it out like man, that's very reassuring that, that's got to feel it's, awesome. no it's just yeah. like yeah, well you know we'll figure it out like yeah. <laughs> the team here is to, and, to him doing the marketing is fantastic like thanks man but like we, we really do have an awesome <laughs> an awesome team, man. Like the, yeah. the, the directors like and it. the owner, like that makes a huge difference. When you believe in the vision of the owner, uh, and then you've got these directors, like yeah. I wouldn't want to go to battle with any other directors and like like these folks that are on our team, man, like everybody's realized what the truth is and it's like cool, well, we gotta do it. Like there's no excuses, like you just gotta fucking do it at the end of the day, right? And having like Matt or front of house guy like We've faced some stuff because the pandemic has, like, hit people differently and people react differently. And then, like, on top of that, you've got, like, what has become, like, social unrest. Like, that affects employees. Yeah. And all of that, at the end of the day, goes up the chain and it hits, like, you know, upper management. And it's, like, you have to deal with it. Yeah. It, how, do you, it, how do you make everything else work? Yeah. Or how do you keep making your business work and everyone, you know, be a part of the same team and, and make it feel like it's a team? What's and the thing is everybody cares. Yeah. So it's like we're all That's trying to important. we're all trying to have we're all trying to keep all the places afloat and yeah. like keep everything going and launch this place and like everybody's giving one hundred and ten percent. So it's but you don't see anybody slacking off and that's cool. Sure. You know, it's like everybody it, wants to make it work. That's awesome. You, you feel like you know when times were different. It's it's more of a black and white world, right? Like front of house director has to deal with you know there's a little bit more gray area there. Back of house like. You've got personnel gray area. Uh, marketing, it's like, this is what you do, and this is what works, and blah, 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 blah. But when this hit, it was just like, it became all gray area. Yeah. There's so many unknowns, and it's like, yeah. fucking get used to curveballs, man. Yeah. Like, your batting average was like, a good batting average is like three-something, amazing is four, and now you're at like .08. Yeah. <laughs> because it's all curveballs, and it's like, yeah. you know, so now with the team that we have, I'm like, I'm glad that these guys are going to bat for me and I'm going to bat for them because it's like as you say it's like a, it's a symbiotic relationship of everybody being like you said everybody gives you know give me 110% no yeah. one's slacking off yeah. and everyone just helps everybody lift everybody else which is awesome yeah. I think it's the way you can really survive right now yeah. as a business yeah one of the things that I was thinking about especially with you know your business and all these other businesses like what this pandemic is teaching businesses it feels like is how to operate at the bare minimum yeah mm -hmm. And totally. I feel like that's more of an advantage when you're first starting out because, you know, you don't, you don't have these, you have expectations and especially coming, having an owner that's done this before. Um, but at least for everybody here, you know how you can operate efficiently, yeah. like with, you know, doing the, yeah, at least yeah. the bare minimum. Uh, and then you kind of go the, you're going to 
have the opposite effect in the future when everything kind of reopens back up, you know, this place will become obviously a lot more popular. So then you're going to have to learn how to operate at a higher efficiency versus yeah. Like, yeah. like, oh. Yeah, you get a chance to almost build up to that. No, 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 no yeah. sorry. It's it's 500 tortillas today. <laughs> not, you know, not just 50. <laughs> I feel, and mailman, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I feel like it's easier to, it now, like, to scale up. I, I think it was, yeah. a, talking about the curveballs, it's like, you don't ever have to like scale down so much and still like work, right? Yeah. It's like you always have to scale up and people get used to that. Yeah. You know, I feel that's how I am where it's like, all right, if there's going to be more work thrown on my plate, cool. Like, yeah. Especially when it's like, boring. yeah, sure. when it's like you've that's got a, a ton of work, but it's like super <laughs> yeah. like different and like spar. It, it just, marketing standpoint's completely fucking weird, man. I, I can't even begin to talk. It, I know it, nothing about marketing. Yeah, it's, it's really just. Like Bells and whistles. Our, uh, you give, uh, give people nicknames, like yeah. mailman. That's part, that's part of marketing. That's the genius of marketing. He came in here as the Dave. Genius. He's leaving here as the mailman. I don't know why, but You're Dave welcome. quit after he did some podcast with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> he said he really liked the job, but that name stuck and he hated it. Well, he and Jesse are no longer talking. His fan club, the mailman, they got really, they got really aggressive. <laughs> the mailman. <laughs> Jesus Thanks for calling the post office. How can I help you? Like, <laughs> this just started today. <laughs> it's going to go on for the rest of your life. Eternal. Eternal. Oh, I've had, Eternal I've had multiple nicknames in the brain. <laughs> I really like that. The mailman. Uh, it's all the neckbeards that are just like, uh, I, I follow him. Yeah. I choose myself to be part of the I'm going to start the Instagram tonight. Oh, the God. Good to be great. Somebody need a picture before we leave. <laughs> I met him. Uh, uh, well, let's take a quick break, um, and we'll come back, and I want to talk about the beers when we okay. come back. So yeah, sure. we'll be right back. Uh, hey. Looking for M's like I lost a friend. Jump out of my bed like where the bread. You go hold the egg. Way to bring the check. When we talk, we collision the car. Keep us in your thoughts. Fully dressed at the crack of dawn. Weapons heading off. I can hear them from the block. See them creeping through the fog. Season's greetings, now feeding season can start. Oh my God. Look alive. Looking like I live life on a crooked line. Doing fine. You want maximum stupid. I am the guy. First of all, fuck the fucking law. We is fucking raw. Stay tall, tall. Oysters on the half jail. Sushi ball. Life a bitch and the pussy feet. Still fuck the wall, I'm a dog, I'm a dirty dog, ha 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 Oh dirty bastard, go in your jaw, <laughs> shimmy shimmy y'all Got the semi in the hemi, go and gimme gimme y'all Pugilistic, my linguistics, RJ Ruler damage y'all And I rap it, pornographic, be set up the camera Ooh la la, are we weak? 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 I got you covered, I'm busted. Bust. My brother's a runner, he crushing, there's no discussion. Gush. I used to be musk and I wasn't supposed to be nothing. Gush. Y'all fuckers corrupted, I up to something disgusting. My pockets are pumped for this season, I love the couple. I'm afraid of nothing but nothing, this ain't it something. Warm augers are dumping, a point and click at your pumpkin. You're suffering instructions, so put your kids in the oven. Fuck a king or queen and all of their lost subjects. I pull my penis out and I piss on their shoes in public. People, we the pirates, the pride of this great republic. No matter what you order, motherfucker, we what you stuck with. Sorry. I used to love Bruce, but live in my vida loca. Help me understand, I'm probably more of a joke. When we usher in chaos, just know that we did it smile. Cannibals on this island, inmates run the asylum. Newspaper media is alive and well yeah. because of this podcast. Yeah. Yes, 
say your tagline. And we're back! <laughs> <laughs> We've actually been back, but you know. I know. It's, it's not gonna, it wouldn't feel the same if you didn't say it. No. Otherwise, the show would I was like, do I do it? I was like, nah, yeah, just wait. It would just be disappointing. No, and I was like, nah, it's I won't know long. when to end music until I hear it, we're back. You're, you're just like holding your breath like... <laughs> Never Can you say it? He never said it. 45 minutes in and... Dude, are, are we back? <laughs> <laughs> well, we are back and uh, we're still here at Crushed by Giants uh, with Dave and Jesse. And I wanted to talk about uh, some of the beers. We, we, what did I do? What did Why I drink did we talk first? about beer? I know. I know, it's dumb. I know. I yeah. think it's a, new, it's a new concept for the show. Let's talk about the actual beer. Ooh, beer. Uh, I think you had the Neon Werewolf. Yeah, that's what yeah. it was. So it's, what, uh, can, you, can you talk about that, Dave? Yeah, that's a... Um, <laughs> can you deliver that to me? It's a, it's a hazy IPA that we did. That we, that's our... It's going to be one of our staples. Um, uh, dry hopped with it's double dry hops. Uh, dry hopped with Citra, Mosaic, Galaxy, and El Dorado. Um, I really like. I'm not a huge fan of the style, but I do like this one a lot. Actually, it's, it, was, um, it was really good. I like when we did we did uh, um, end all at uh, Solemn Oath, and uh, that one I liked a lot. And then I, I've been getting into the style. Like, is, if, if I can do it my way, sure. you know, I'm into it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, yeah this one I like. This one I like a lot. It's definitely not a. <clears throat> uh, I like the style, but I've definitely had some bad ones. Ones that just kind of like, mm, you just kind of did this to do it, and it doesn't really taste. Yeah. Like, what I've come to expect. That was was good. It was good mouthfeel to it. I, I like the balance of the sweetness and bitterness to it. And it yeah. was fruity. And that's kind of what I, I I look for. That it's. The hop flavor that you're getting is almost uh, just full on like all the fruity and or piney and floral notes that you can get from hops right up in your face and on your palate without it uh, just being kind of flat, you know, or mm -hmm. more like muddled, like a muddled hop taste. I feel like yeah, some, yeah. some some of the double dry hop beers that I've had where it's clearly just doing it to do it because it's going to sell when people see it. Uh, some of them have come to be a little muddled with what hops they're using or the amounts that they're using. But that was yeah. those tasty. I liked it. And I'll the, be honest with you. The, the, I don't I, like I mean, please do, man. <laughs> like, I can take criticism. It's no problem. Um, but, I mean, it's. I think it's about, uh, like, <clears throat> using the right hop amounts and the right combinations. Like, you don't have to over hop it either. Yeah. You know? And then, cause, and then you know, having a process where you, you keep it fresh but and, and it's not vegetal. Because you can get a lot of that hot material and stuff like that in yeah. there, and I've had it's some just canned ones like yeah. That where the last sip, I was like, it's burning in my throat because it's now hot particles just mm -hmm. sitting there. You have it's to be gross. a lot more conscious yeah. of, of oxygen pickup with these. For sure. um, I definitely learned that at Great Central, making a lot of them uh, on a large scale, like because they'll end up brown. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. of all the hot like material in there and just stuff like sitting. that. So yeah, it's a. Uh, I think he is balance. You know, like it. It is a balancing. Yeah. And, and I like the the. These beers to be much different than my West Coast. Like I want my West Coast to be that's like an I'm ideal West Coast. West Coast. That yeah. that one I didn't write that recipe, okay. but that's that was a hot butcher thing that Brand did before. But it's uh, really good. We we decided to make it again here. But um, yeah, when I do West Coast, I want them to be clear and Crisp, bitter and, yeah. and like very West Coast, and nice then and dry. the hazy yeah. stuff should be juicy and not bitter, and but not with that chalkiness to it. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. That, chalky. Yeah. That's a great. That's you know a great what I'm saying? Really, like yeah. you want to have like a clean. You want it to taste clean, but still be. Like smooth almost. Yeah. Like it should, smooth. It should like a velvety yeah. well, it, mouth it goes feel. back to the, the, yeah, the it balance. It goes back to like, the mouthfeel, yeah. but without, it's very much, a, with those beers, it's very much, I think, about the mouthfeel. Yeah. Those stuff. Like, when, yeah. they, when they first started and gaining the steam, it is not by any means my preferred style of beer. Sure. And, you know, like, my first love of, like, hoppy beer was, was West Coast. Yeah. And then I just had too yeah. much. I think all three of us, or all four of us, sorry, I covered Yeah, myself. no, yeah. you're yeah. correct. All four of us can agree. Yeah. And then I, like, I, like, just totally, like, left the, the IPA world because I'm like it was too much. I yeah. had like palate fatigue and I fell really in love with like, more Belgian beers and like, more mm -hmm. malty beers. And then now, as a professional, like you're like you have to drink what's out there and, and see what's out there so you can intelligently speak about it. So like these beers were like gaining steam and you're having them and I'm like okay. And there was somewhere I'm like this is not my style, but I can have a taste and I can like sit there and be like cool. I see what you're going for, but you know to your point, your point, like you sometimes you have them and it's like. You're just an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> why, did, why did you do Some this? Bad beer. Yeah. yeah, you know, and, and, and like now there's so many goddamn mutations where it's like a like milkshake East Coast, and you're just like, dude, why? Yeah. Like, yeah, there's I, I had I have a hard time with the milkshake IPAs. It's um, I, it's not for me. I would say the closest thing that I got to it was Maplewood Son of Shaky, and it was pretty much 
the only way it was honest was that it's all these hops, which are very citrusy, and then a shit ton of vanilla. I couldn't sit there and drink a whole bunch of them, but it tastes like a cream skull without having right. orange juice in it. Yeah. You were getting, I was getting all the fruitiness from the hops. So I appreciated that. So I was like, okay, so it's a vanilla IPA. Weird. Yeah. But I liked it. Yeah. Anything else I've tried, I, don't, I can't. I've not had a good one. Yeah. Well, that's, I have a hard time getting behind those. That's the thing is, like, you want, like, as a brewer, I want people to sit there and have a couple beers. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, then, like, if, if you only can drink just one of them, you're like, oh, yeah, that's good. I really, like, we had we had one yesterday at a, at a brewery, and I was like, this is really good. But Brandt was like, it's like, I really like it. He's like, but I probably wouldn't drink more than one. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want somebody to sit there and, like, have some beers, you know? Yeah. That's, like, that's how you make and, and be social. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, yeah. And, and, and like, and I like people beer. to sit around and be social and, like, you know, do stuff. That's why I love making, like, Kolsch's. And we got an yeah. Italian Pils and a Mexican lager coming out. And, like, cool. I love stuff like that. So, um, yeah, but... I, I get the appeal to some of this stuff because it's new and it's innovative I don't. and it's <laughs> I, I don't I don't personally I don't personally love like like my pal my palate doesn't do that like yeah. I it goes against everything that I was trained to do by <laughs> right. the Germans and like they're like they would probably kick me out of the country if I did stuff like that <laughs> do but, the opposite of what you learned and yeah people will drink it I feel so, like I like am. you know milkshake IPAs if I could like characterize it it'd be like a like an 80s hair metal guy with like <laughs> fucking hair and all these different patterns just like all like shit on a person and, and yeah. like we're good cold like a good culture just like black sabbath like throughout the years just like wearing black just very yeah. like you know what to expect <laughs> sure, yeah. sure, sure. Uh, and everything else is like i don't know if i've got white snake or rat today and it's just like too much like <laughs> you know it, it's and when i taste these beers i'm like why like yeah, why sure. and but the the beer world has changed man like we're like the old guard, right? Like some of us are even older, the older guard, and it's like the shit that we and really some enjoy. Come and go for sure. Yeah, I'm sure you guys have too. I, know. I, mean, I mean, when I, mean, I started, it was Belgian IPAs. Like, yeah, we yeah. won two gold medals for those. At who the America. hell drinks Belgian IPAs now, though? No, well, that's the thing. Black it's like IPAs went away. I mean, Wookie Jack was like the. Oh, dude! I remember oh, yeah. when when Black IPAs. Those were one of my favorite I styles. Love I love that shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like Wookie Jack went away. Like that was one of the greatest ones. <laughs> we <laughs> talked about this when we did a. Yeah. We were talking. We did a episode just kind of discussing uh, New Glarious beers. And yeah. They had their black top. Yeah. Oh yeah. And like. And I had looked it up like right when we were doing the show, and I was like, "Oh, this one's retired. They don't do this one anymore." Yeah. Like, and I, that, that's the first black IPA I had that I fell in love with. I was like, yeah. "Man, this is first a, one that, this is pretty awesome." The first but, one I had, I think, was from Pipeworks. I don't remember which one it was, but it was a black IPA. And I was like, uh, and I just that's when I started homebrewing, and I was like, "What? A, there's a black IPA? This yeah. is this is crazy." And I made one. I was like, "Oh, I didn't do this right. This is not good." Because it was still early. <laughs> yeah. We, but yeah, but I, I was gonna be thinking like brute IPAs. I mean, all of a sudden it was like. I thought it was we like, did a really nice one at some moment. I tried, I tried a couple of. I forget who it was that I actually liked, but the ones I tried, I was just like, this is just not. It's one of the ones that were not. It was a style not for me. But I thought that one was really going to be I, like, become the next thing. And I was like, God, I thought that style. Yeah. I was all right with I it. Liked it. A lot of it was people, fun because like you could mess around with enzymes and do right. cool yeah. stuff. Yeah, the science part of it was intriguing. Yeah, you know, Cruz Blanca did what I thought was like the Cruz did a really nice one. Yeah, yeah it, it was a beautiful brewed IPA, I'm, and I'm like. If this style were to become a thing, like mm-hmm. this is what that was. That was like one of those beers where, like, you look back and you're like, this was like the style. Like, this is what the sure. proper. Even though, like, the brute IPA was not really like defined very well. It was like, oh, like this one's got this and this one's got that. Where, you know, you, it, you wouldn't make it in the BJCP because right. it was like defined differently by different breweries and different coasts. But I think Jacob did this like really beautiful balance. And it, well, he's a great brewer. Yeah, before everything happened, like he was still making it. It, it wasn't like. He didn't do it to do as it. a style. Sure. As, like it was just like this is a beer that we do now. Yeah, uh, and I think it's it's beautiful and like it's hard. I don't even. I try to think who even still makes brewed IPAs for me to to give it a try again. That's Dude, a, once you're in Nevada, made there's it's like you know something's happening. Once you're in Nevada, it's like yeah. we're gonna put this into our, like our hundred barrel system yeah. rotation. <laughs> you know, like you know, like a style is like becoming a style, and then it just dropped. Yeah. Well, and that was I. It'll be like that with everything. Yeah, well, even like hazy IPAs, like there isn't, there is still isn't, and but maybe think it was Sierra Nevada because they have like their Imperial Hazy IPA, mm-hmm. which I purchased recently, which is actually pretty good. But any mass-produced hazy IPA is just not. No, it, it's. I, I feel like maybe I'm just spoiled coming from Chicago, where we do have a lot of places it's that the, make really good. It's the process of it. Hazy yeah. IPAs. Yeah. Uh, doing it, doing it on a pub is differently right. than doing it. Having done it at Great Central, we, we did a ton of Maplewood stuff, yeah. Ju- Son of Jews, 
juice pants, all that. Yeah, stuff. and those are some of my. I mean, Maple is kind of become yeah. like one of my go-to breweries for anything. Like and they make they make great beer and stuff yeah. like that. But the process of us doing it on a large scale like that sure. and on a system that's like a completely automated four vessel system is definitely different than doing it on a. And it's going to taste different than me doing it here of on, a, on a pub. And I think that pub level stuff lends itself better to making those type of beers. Not that they're not done well on a production right. scale, because I've done them on both, yeah. but it's just different, you sure. know what I mean? It's just a different process, like, um, it's something about the dry hopping and stuff like that. Yeah. There's a new book I want to read about about that, actually. But, um... Yeah, I, I... Even doing my own, like, when I'm brewing, I'll, I'll do, you know, the hazy IPAs, and I found out, you know, the easiest, the best way that I, I would accomplish it was being really basic and really easy with it you know and not and not overthinking it over complicating like, recipes so many hops and we learned that actually from uh eric flores about he was telling me how to uh what? the best way to go about um making my doing an ipa and i changed my recipe based on what he told me yeah and i haven't looked back so well they, and, and that's the thing it's like when when i started home brewing it was actually so kevin and david from low res brewing um they're they are the ones that brought me into like beer world like I will always give them credit for me wanting to get into like the professional beer world but um, a, a mutual friend of ours Andy Conkle was like hey I know you like you're in a beer why don't you come like brew with us <laughs> and I was like fuck Sounds yeah dude because like yeah, he's a very he's a very big uh, standoffish guy he's, a, he's like a, he's just an asshole but he's a teddy bear but it was a very like uh, like shitty nice invite you know and I, I went hey, in there loser, you want to come hey, beer? <laughs> Hey, I know you're in a beer, whatever, you poser, uh, life poser. Cool scooter. Come, yeah. <laughs> and then he picks on scooter, me. Scooter bitches. <laughs> scooter. scooter bitches. That's the name of my gang. Um, so I showed up to Kevin's house, and, you know, he's, like, brewing out of his garage. And uh, those dudes, they were all tech guys. Like, they were IT dudes, and they homebrewed. And they taught me, like, exactly that. Like, don't overcomplicate shit. And the other guys that would come by for, like, brew day, they were just kind of there to hang out, and, like, it became a bottle share, which is awesome yeah. as well. But, like, you know... That was most of our club meetings. It was just a bottle share. Yeah. It was, like, the two guys brewing. <laughs> yeah. But, it, like, for me, who always wants to learn more and, like, ask questions, I was like, why wouldn't you do this, this, and this? And they're just kind of like, you don't have to do that, dude. Like, you can buy someone else's beer. They can do that. Yeah. Like, when what we were trying to do is dial in recipes, and they were like, yeah, we want to open a brewery someday. And Low Res finally came out, and it's... They make amazingly good beer. They're so great. They do. I went there the first time was with uh, Brant. And yeah. I, yeah. Didn't you meet up with us? Yeah. I was yeah, there. Yeah. 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 You yeah. and your cousin came. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That was a that was a good that was a good day. I enjoyed that. But that's you know like when th there's something to be said about like a, a casual beer fan, even a, like a very uh, passionate beer fan, and like someone that's made beer, and then like someone that, that's worked in the industry. Like there's different lenses. Yeah. And you know, and I was guilty of it. Like I'm the same way with food. When I started doing stuff with food and beer, it was like, the more shit, the better. How crazy is this? Yeah. And then you, like, learn about beer, and you learn about beer styles, and you, like, learn to appreciate balance and simplicity, and, like, you just, like, dial it way back. Yeah, and then the ingredients that you have in front of you. It's 100% true. You almost yeah. have it You really right need there. to simplify yeah. stuff. It, the sure. simpler, the better, if you can. Yeah. Get there the simplest way with the less stuff will give you the better product, for sure. i got to learn that with my stouts. My stouts, I, I still don't feel like I've really mastered making a good... Stouts are... Stout. Yeah. you got to... I've are, done a whole bunch, but I'm yeah, just yeah. kind of like, eh, I feel like it's fun. <laughs> I definitely see. I, I used to see that. Like we, we would even get a recipes at, like at, at Great Central, and you'd see them. And I just tell tell Andreas, I'm like, we can get there with like half this malt. Do we want to talk, <laughs> talk to these guys? Like they, yeah. he's like, no, we got to make it this way. I'm like, all right. Okay. But I mean, it's <laughs> it's. Yeah. I mean, it's you know, everybody does things differently. Right. You're not going to yeah. tell somebody how to do it. But I mean, uh, I I found that I've had the best results by making it simplified. You know, follow the basics and and you'll get right. to what. And then want. also like. There's at some point like you're like especially with like these hazies and stuff like that people like just throw so much hops at it you're just like dude you can get there with you yeah, just you don't need that dial in your process and, and you can Trust cut your process. cost by like a lot <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so there's certain things hops like, ain't cheap yeah and I, yeah especially some of these ones that we're using and yeah and stuff so oh yeah this this West Coast IPA I had said that was uh, another recipe but that's that's really tasty now did the, the Kolsch you're drinking the Kolsch right yes is that your recipe as well yeah yeah uh, what uh, just standard Kolsch like it's Kulsh. just wheat and, <laughs> it's just wheat and Pilsner malt that's all it is right on and yeah. uh, acidulated malt 
So yeah, I've 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 come around to, you know, as you were you were saying about you know, getting burning out your own palate with IPAs and shit like that. And you know, I I did it for a little bit, and then during that time, I found out that I like Kolsch, and I had no idea. I love Kolsch. <laughs> like I was like, this is one of the greatest styles ever. Because it's it fantastic. Me of a lager. Amazing. It's amazing. It's, 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 oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean. Where it's from. It's a birthday. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's really become one of the styles that I really do enjoy, especially when, you know, if I, my, my fridge, I have all these random beers. And like I said, you know, I, I do seek out you know, some of those hazy beers, so I have some of those in there and other random sours and shit like that. But I always keep at least, like, what, like right now I've got Revolution's Ghost Ride just sitting in there. Yeah. So I have, like, yeah, like a case of it? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> why? Thanks for that $20 stack of bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I've got some of those left. And so it's really nice, like, if I come home from work and I want to, like, crack into, like, okay, I just got home from work. Straight to an 8% double dry hop, double IPA. It's, you know, yeah. having a culture is something that's kind of refreshing. Well, it's a beer um, you can drink. Yeah. You know, you can have more than one of them and, like, <laughs> still, like, do stuff. Well, that was Dude, always our go-to at Solomon Oath was Lou. Yeah. We just, if oh, we were yeah, having yeah. after work beers, like, it was hot and we would just be like, oh, I'll crush these, you know? Yeah. Well, I was, crave coal. Um, at the map <laughs> room, they have got they always have Reisdorf. Yeah, they um, do. And that's oh, a good dude. one. And there's literally days, maybe I'm an alcoholic, I don't know, but like there's days where I'm like, man, I just want one beer before I go home, you know? And it's like, it's been a long day if I'm like running around, if I have like after work meetings, and I'm like, I need one beer and I'll go to Map Room and get a, the Reisdorf Kolsch. Nice. And I'm just like, fuck, it comes in proper glassware and everything is, it's just, that beer is so beautiful. And I'm, I'm a lager guy, but I mean, it, it's a technically an ale, but it's like, yeah. there's, That's you know. That's the best part about it. Like a cold, even for, sorry, not to cut you off, but even at a home brewer level, I am cutting you off. You are, the, totally. Yeah, totally, I'm keep going with it. Uh, <laughs> That's the funny about being a home brewer is, uh, you know, if you don't have the means to make a lager, or if you're just lazy like me, and you have the means, but you don't want to spend all the time, making Kolsch is an easy uh, workaround. Well, that's why we poor man's lager. That's we were supposed to open with an Italian pills, and that's that's in the tanks right now. It's still in Italy. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. We're done. Good night, everybody. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> uh, but we didn't have the time, so we did the Kolsch instead. But uh, and it's a fantastic Kolsch, man. I, I, I appreciate. I've been that. crushing these because uh, my hands shake, and I have to control those. So the Kolsch is the way to do it. <laughs> No, this this coach is fantastic, dude. Like I I love the malt bill on this is it's two two grains, man. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's so angel simple. Angel yeah. right next to his head. <laughs> <laughs> and then as take I, a break, man. Guy, take a break. Hop, <laughs> what was that? That was hot with Saphir, and that's all Saphir actually. And Brandon, you're drinking the blueberry yeah the blueberry goes, goes yeah yeah. How's uh, that taste? It's fucking that? phenomenal, man. Like I I never was really into the goes style, but more recently. Um, I, it's specifically because my wife, she's not like a hop fan and she likes stouts, but we were looking for something different and I was like, try this, <laughs> try this, see, see if you like it. And she started, you know, so I started buying more of it because she yeah. liked it. And then I started drinking. I'm like, you know what? I, I dig this style. I dig it. You know, it's not a sour. It's not too sour for me. Like some sours are like, I think the pH on that's like three, five. Yeah. Or like I that. mean, this is just so well balanced, man. And the color Beautiful color. The color rules. What do you guys do with the blueberries? You use, it's like, it's blackberry, blueberry. actually. Oh, black oh, blackberry. Yeah, oh, sorry. Um, that's all right. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just it's it's just blackberry juice. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's about, mm, I think, 80 gallons in there. Nice. Yeah, the color is beautiful. Yeah, it's... But, I, I mean, I, I, this all day. I like doing the fruited ones like that because, like, you get, like, the sweetness tart from the... Well, there's the acid in there, and then... The sweetness from the juice or tartness from the juice and then you get that kind of briny saltiness of the goza like towards the end that's that, like maybe that, that's what it is that i like like the, the goza, is, yeah. well yeah like well, we that put little, salt in yeah, yeah i yeah. mean that i think that might be what it is that like makes this better for me versus like a, just a straight up sour yeah i i I've, the ph is a little higher on those two usually yeah i did my first sour and it's like or my second sour. The table sour? Yeah, my table fruit sour. It's like 2% because I did I did second runnings from a beer that was only like 6%. That's cool. Yeah. And so I ended up with like 2% beer, but with it being sour, and I put, I think it was a pound of mixed berries, like frozen organic berries, and then I had these uh, frozen Michigan cherries. Mm. Oh, I yeah. put it on top of there. It's just, I was telling Brandon recently, there was like, my night I fell asleep in the basement, 
I woke up. I'm like, <laughs> by the way, my basement, uh, yeah, there's a TV and a couch. It's not just me on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sleeping by the hot water tank. Yeah. <laughs> I fell asleep down there. Oh, no. I was fixing my uh, furnace and decided to take a nap. Sounds fucked up. The kids and I are leaving you. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sleeping downstairs. Uh, I woke up. It was like 10 o'clock, and I was like, like it's hot. And I was like, I don't want to go upstairs to get water. So I went, I grabbed my glass and poured like a little taster of this. I mean, I mean it's refreshing. It was 2%. It it's like, it's like kombucha. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I hey, took my beer kombucha. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, Agosta is one of the ones man, cool. uh, I want to, I definitely want to mess around with next because I feel like that's also a style my wife would, would like. We're always concerned about what will our wives drink because <laughs> we get the final okay on buying those ingredients. Well, it's also that beer five gallons of beer that's going to sit in your <laughs> yeah, house. Drink some of how, <laughs> how long is it going to sit there if you're the only one drinking it? You know, do you like it? Don't you? Don't you? <laughs> I remember when I was home brewing in my house in Florida. Um, when I, before I became a professional brewer, like I, I brewed so much, I was just giving kegs away. Oh yeah, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, you, you guys want some guy. beer? I was that guy. Yo, did you have a party soon? Mm, wasn't planning on it. Yeah, you are. Yeah, it's you Wednesday are. party. It was. It was the best. Well, I owned. Thing. A, I owned a house, so I was like, I would have people over and be like, yeah. come over and drink all this, please. Yeah. <laughs> My it, friends it, it, probably got tired of it. They were like, can we get some uh, court banquet or something? Man? Well, and like, it wasn't even for the. <laughs> it wasn't even for the fact where it's like, drink this beer because I don't want it. Was drink this beer because. I'm ready to brew more. <laughs> no, that's, that's what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Always. You know, uh, I need an empty keg, so come these, on. Yeah. In these times, <laughs> I wasn't, I'm not able to do that. But normally, that's what I would do during this year. You know, summertime, yeah, yeah. it'd be like, oh, we're, we're having people over in a, in a couple of weeks. Cool. I'll go ahead and throw I'm gonna go, like four beers. Like, you don't need to have four beers on <laughs> tap. I learned that when we had our first like block party. I was like, boom, moved to the new house. We got a block party. Do like three beers. One beer went, and I had two full <laughs> kegs. And I was like, ah, learn my lesson. Don't always have to brew. Yeah. <laughs> So just a quick question. So you talked about uh, with the goes having you used blackberry juice. Mm -hmm. So when you do fruited beers, is your preference to use fruit like the juice or like actual puree? Fruits? Yeah, or puree or like kind of oh yeah, like, 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 like extract. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't. I haven't used a lot of extract or anything like that. Just it's usually juice or puree. Depends on the fruit and what I can get. Sure. But I have a pretty good line on on juice, and I like the fact that I can get them. With the puree, you tend to have to, um, they don't get as clear. I mean, they can or yeah. not. It depends on what you, your process of doing it. But this is a little easier, and I like the color and things like that. It's attractive visually. Yeah. Um, when It's just easier to get to with the juice, and the juice is a little less expensive. So. I can see that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I use both. Right. So it depends on what you want to get. Cool, man. Yeah, this, this, these beers are better. I haven't had a bad beer so far. Yeah. So far. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> there's still yes. more left. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, well, I mean, these are the first runs of everything, and um, uh, I say first run, pretty good, man. I mean, we didn't. I didn't even get a much of a chance to dial in the system or even work on it much before I even did the first brew because I was brewing at the other locations. Oh, right, yeah. So it tastes um, like a new tank. <laughs> yeah, right. no, everything was passivated and clean beforehand. You're like, oh, it's got that grease taste. <laughs> no, uh, did you use part? stainless steel cleaner? It's <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part of this West Coast IPA, metal. Yeah. No, everything was clean and passive. <laughs> so delicious. But I didn't get I didn't get much of a chance to to, to brew on the system, none at all until <laughs> until we did like the first batch and whatever. So like. But well, uh, just the way your stuff is set up, like I don't see how you really would have a chance to like. Oh yeah. Oh, let's play around with this, see how it works. It's like nope, it's in we'll, here. We'll, we'll take it. a picture it's here, it's and, 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 and attach it to the, the, this posting on the on the site because the setup is pretty awesome. And it's like, cool. I, I, it's crazy. It's unique. This is definitely yeah, the easiest one out of all the locations uh, to brew on. In yeah, my opinion, everything's all nicely together. Yeah, no, I, 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 I told Jesse, I'm like, this would be, I want this in my basement, something like this. You know, my basement where there's nothing, it's just me on the floor. <laughs> where I have to drink beer drink when I'm my thirsty. <laughs> Give the kids some water. Give them some goza. <sighs> Well, shit, guys, this is this has been awesome. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, uh, I, we got to cut you off. No, to, no. just kind of like, did. all together. Awesome. Yeah, I know. I like how you guys are like, don't mean to cut you off and you do it. I mean, this is a thing now. This is what you guys I do, do as partners. I just turn this mic off most of the time. <laughs> You've never turned um, my mic off But I do want to kind of, just to, so we have this in here, uh, if either of you guys, either you guys want to say um, where you guys are located, what oh, your yeah. hours are. So uh, Brandon's way better at that. So the address, the address is 600 North uh, Michigan Avenue, but the entrance is at 601 Rush. 
So at the corner of Ohio and Rush. Northeast corner entrance. of Ohio and Rush. Northeast corner. Um, yeah. The hours right now we're doing three to nine. Three right? to nine. Three to nine. And then uh, I think on the weekends we're doing one o'clock. We we start beer, beer sales uh, Saturday Sundays at yeah. one p.m. because people need to start drinking earlier on yeah. the weekends. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. I mean that's what we did. Too. Reality hits. Yeah. <laughs> Kids, wives, you know, wives, these times, yeah. husbands, these times, and these times. I've only got um, two days till I have to work from home again. God, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you guys. <laughs> I gotta no, ruin my body this weekend before I start work on Monday. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, Saturday, Sunday, we're doing one o'clock open for beer, and then the kitchen opens at three, and then close at nine. Yeah, doing uh, do to go through DoorDash. Um, we also do. We can do pickup orders. You can do pickup do orders. Toast. We have beer to go and crowlers, uh, 32 ounce crowlers. That's a beautiful thing. You can yeah. have beer delivered to you. You yeah. can get like really yeah. fresh beer delivered to you. Thanks, DoorDash. Very fresh beer. Very fresh beer. Yeah, those are very one of the fresh beer. That I really hope. Uh, 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 I think get in there. I hope, I, I hope that's one of the things that does continue. We've talked about this before too, that continues post pandemic is the ability for breweries to have that option to just. Yeah, I think it's great. That's awesome. I mean, honestly, like when we first. Uh, when this first all went down and you could only do to go yeah like Steve and I would spend like hours a day just filling crawlers to go like because yeah. and, and thank you all for all the support yes and buying all of the go beers yeah. because that's kept us in business and stuff so like and and me with a job so um, yeah it, it, it was a definitely interesting like how much like to go crawlers and stuff like that we were yeah, selling. I awesome. was going to other breweries and picking up crawlers. <laughs> we were like, it was like the can, it was like a can shortage for a minute. Like yeah. it was, I think uh, uh, revolution. <laughs> half, yeah. acre, half acre owes me a lot of money because I kept them afloat personally. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw your, I saw your post. I saw the post like on that. What was the locker that you're getting? Yeah, on? like I was, I was drinking a fader. Like <laughs> yeah, fader. That's like man. Was. I'm like all day at work. I'm like I can't wait to start drinking my half acre after work. <laughs> 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 I need more. I need more. Uh, we, uh, so you guys are on social media. It's just crushed by giants. Crushed by giants. Uh, website. If people still use those, we're at crushed yeah, by giants. I did. Dot com. I there you go. It. I want to see if there was more. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, does anybody still tweet anymore? I don't. I was live tweeting a taste. The president virtual, does. Virtual beer tasting. He does. Really does. Which was a lot of fun. Uh, so, you know, she gets drunk. He's the best. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I use. We have a Twitter account, but we don't, we're not active. We're, uh, I'm going to start sending messages to this and be like, I'll hey, be like, God what's new? Damn it, this is the only reason we have this. <laughs> we just have Twitter so we can share our Instagram posts too. Yeah, yeah, that's, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly why we have it. I just have an Instagram. We just have it so we can like <laughs> Trump's post. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, tweets. So, yeah, Instagram is at Crush by Giants, Facebook at Crush by Giants, um, and at Crush by, Crush by Giants dot com is our. Not uh, at Crush by Giants. www. HTTP. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're Crush by Giants dot com. <laughs> uh, well, thanks, guys. This was, uh, this was a lot of fun. Um, I hope nothing but the best for you guys. Thank you. Uh, and I look forward to coming down here. Uh, it was a fast drive for us. We're on the northwest side. It was a 15 minute drive. Nice. So I, there's no reason for me to not say I can't just stop in and grab some beer to go sometimes. Well, in so these times, too, there's not a lot of traffic. Ooh. Please Boy. do. Yeah, get traffic. Traffic. yeah, let me know when you got those shirts back in stock, Jesse. We are missing one shirt. Yeah, okay. the one I want. <laughs> Great. Nice. Picky little bitch. Uh, but yeah, congratulations, guys. This is awesome. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Thank you. You know, cheers to future success. success. Looking forward for us to come back here, maybe. Uh, well, we'll come back another time and revisit, you know, when it's uh hop- Come visit the other spots. We've got Corridor, we've got Dry Hop. All right, fine, we'll do Roebuck. that too. Jesse, tell me how to run our show. Steve's got some new cool stuff, and Frank is... Here we uh, are, talking to Jesse again at the fourth brewery. <laughs> hey, guys. We brought Dave the mailman with because, well, we liked him from the first time. <laughs> this is Steve the deliverer. <laughs> oh, man, that guy's... A, Jesse's a one-trick pony. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> this is Frank the... The, the drop off driver, guy, the drop off guy, or the FedEx guy, <laughs> Frank. Then we get sued. <laughs> Frank, the new Lemmy. <laughs> he looks like Lemmy from Motor. Cool. <laughs> yeah, we definitely He'll appreciate that. He looks like Little Lemmy. Uh, well, but, uh, uh, they're doing some good stuff up there. You guys should definitely check it yeah, out. Dude. All right. Well, we'll, yeah, yeah, totally. this, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll talk about it. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's go do that. Well, Brandon, this is it. We're done. This is the last is show the we're end. ever gonna do. Damn. I'm joking. Thank God. These times man. of taking your lives. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for listening. Multi hour, you know where to find us on everything the Instagrams, the Twitters that we barely use, the Facebooks that we now use. <laughs> and that's it. And multihour.com, go there. And if you see a Trump ad, it's because of your search history, not because of us. Bye. <laughs> it's a great, it's Later. A great ad. <laughs>